Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownload Blog, and today we're taking a look at the brand new 2021 M1 iPad Pro. And in this video, I'm gonna go over how to use this iPad, as well as some great accessories for it and tips and tricks for really maximizing your iPad Pro. Let's go ahead and get started. So in the packaging with this iPad, you don't really get any surprises. You get Apple's 20 watt wall charger, which is not actually the fastest speed that the iPad can charge at. But then you also get a USB-C to USB-C cable, as well as some paperwork, which includes your quick start guide, as well as your Apple stickers. Unfortunately, these do not come in the fun colors that the iMac does, which I just did a video on, which you can check out if you're interested. Now quickly taking a look at the hardware of this iPad, you can see that it's very familiar and very similar to last year's iPad Pro, the 2020 iPad Pro. Up here we have two cameras, one is going to be your standard angle and one is going to be your wide angle camera. This is your flash, this is a microphone, and then this is a LiDAR depth sensor which you can use for different augmented reality, virtual reality, depth sensing, measuring, all that kind of stuff with this sensor here. Down here you have a smart pin which will allow you to connect to different accessories. On the right side of your device you have your volume buttons up and down followed by the power button up top with some speakers microphones up top and then speakers and microphones and your USB-C charging port at the bottom which is now also Thunderbolt enabled. And on the top of your device you have a magnet which can be used in conjunction with an Apple Pencil which is great. Now the power button is used to activate Siri so you can see I can hold down the power button to get to Siri. If I want to turn off my device I press the up volume button, the down volume button and hold the power button and I can get my power off and then I'll shut it down and then use the power button to turn it back on. And if I want to do a screenshot, I can use the power button plus the up volume button and I can get a screenshot. And once it takes a screenshot, I can then click on that and I can change the transparency. I can annotate it with different tools over here. I can share it if I want. And I can click done and I can save it to the files app the photos app or I can delete it. So that is a tour of the buttons around your device. Now in terms of navigation, to get from any app to your home screen, you're gonna simply swipe up. If you wanna see your recent applications, you swipe up and hold and you can see all your recent apps. If you wanna switch back and forth between recent apps, you go side to side in either direction, just like that. And if you wanna go into your notification center, you swipe down from the middle and you'll see your notifications there. If you want to access your quick controls, you go up to the top right hand corner and drag down and there you have your quick controls, whether it is brightness or volume or camera or flashlight. And then you have your Wi-Fi and other things up there and airdrop controls are right there. And if you want to customize what lives in there, you can do that by going to your settings app and then going to control center and there you can add and remove different options. So if you wanted to add music recognition, put it there and now you have music recognition that lives right there which is great. Now on your home screen if you swipe to the right you get your today view and your widgets and you can add these and subtract them or rearrange them by clicking edit down there which you can see that and you can rearrange you can click the customize button down there and you can also just add more widgets if you want. So do calendar, add widget, now if you put your device in landscape mode, you'll have the ability to keep your widgets there at all times. In order to customize this setting, you go into your settings, home screen and dock, and then click the keep today view on home screen. This way you can have quick access to anything you want from battery to weather, to calendar, to reminders, notes, maps, stocks, all that kind of stuff, which is great. And one tip I really like, if you have multiple applications that you want to drag at the same time, you simply put it into your wiggle mode then you can tap multiple apps at the same time and then drag it to another screen and let go. And then you have your apps right there. So it's a great way of moving multiple apps at once. Now, as I showed in the intro of this video, Apple does give you their 20 watt wall charger, which you then plug into the wall and you can charge your iPad up to 20 watts, but the iPad can get closer to 30 watts of charging speed. So you can get a better, faster charger than this including one that is the same size as Apple's 5-watt cube that they give you with some of the iPhones, or they used to give you with the iPhones. 
This is actually a 30 watt charger that is almost identical in size and shape, obviously much smaller than Apple's. So this will be able to charge your iPad faster and you can also throw it in a bag because it's super portable. And this is from Ohi, and they are the sponsor of this video. You can check out the link in the description if you wanna get this faster, smaller charger for your iPad, but also for your other devices. Now the iPad's USB-C port is also really great for charging other devices. So if you have an iPhone, you can use a USB-C to lightning cable. And again, this is from Ohi. You just plug that into your iPad just like that. And then you can plug in your phone. And just like that, you are charging your iPhone. You can also charge your Apple Watch or a different device or really any small accessory that is smaller than the iPad in, in battery size. You're going to be able to charge it, which is super great, super functional. Uh, and one of my favorite features of the iPad is just charging my AirPods or my iPhone or any other devices because the iPad's battery is so big. So that's super cool, especially if you pair it with this quick charger on the go. Now in terms of other accessories for the iPad, let's go ahead and get started. Of course, you do have Apple's Magic Keyboard, which is fantastic. It's magnetic, it has a really good viewing angle, it has a great keyboard and a really good trackpad, but it is pretty bulky and heavy, and it is around $300, although you can buy it refurbished on Amazon for about $180, which I would recommend, and I'll leave that link down in the description if you're interested. If you want something cheaper with a detachable keyboard, and a function row and more viewing angles and stuff like that. I'd recommend Logitech's new case, which I just did a review of. So you can check out that video if you wanna see if this keyboard is right for you. And of course you can always connect Bluetooth keyboards. So this is Apple's keyboard. You can use this or a cheap third party Bluetooth keyboard. And then you can pair any mouse you want with it, whether it's a trackpad or a mouse. So you can do Apple's Magic Mouse, Logitech's MX Master Mouse, which is really great, but probably a little bit big for the iPad, or something smaller like Logitech's Pebble Mouse, which is super portable and you can take it anywhere. and has super satisfying click buttons. And this is definitely one of my favorite mice to just keep in my backpack at all times if I ever need a mouse for my iPad. And you can connect these in the Bluetooth settings and use it like a regular mouse on your iPad, which is really excellent. And definitely take advantage of the mouse options on your iPad. Now, of course, because it does have this USB-C Thunderbolt port at the end of your device, you can connect extra accessories and peripheries to your iPad. So you can do this by directly connecting a cable to your iPad like I showed you before. And I could connect something like extra storage with a USB-C hub by doing this option, just plugging it directly into the iPad like that. Or you can also get a USB-C hub with a cable like this. Then you'll have a bunch of extra ports on your iPad like USB and HDMI and SD. Or there's an option such as this hyperdrive which will add HDMI, USB, headphone jack, and more and just attaches right to your iPad, which is one of my favorite ways of doing it. I love having this just attached right to my iPad and I can connect a monitor, I can connect headphones, I can connect a microphone and more. And if you do connect a microphone to your iPad using USB, you can go right into your voice memos app and click record and it will automatically go and start recording from the microphone that you have plugged in, which is really excellent. And then finally, you can also just use simple USB-C to USB-A adapters like this. So I can plug this in here. And then if I wanted to plug in, let's just say a microphone for a podcast or something like that, I just plug this right in. Now, if you wanna get really fancy with this iPad, you can actually connect it to really high resolution displays now because this port is more powerful. It can handle more data. So if you wanna use a really nice 4K display with your iPad, you are able to connect that. Now, in terms of your stylus options, you have a few. You can use Apple's second generation stylus, which is really great. This allows you to use it just as you would expect to. Now, if you wanna save some money, you could go for a third-party option like this. This is about $25 and it works pretty well and it still has a magnetic attachment to your iPad. So you can still attach it to the top of your iPad just like this. But I have made a video talking about this, which you can check out if you're interested. Now, on top of this being great, if you wanna plug in a microphone, this has studio quality microphones built into the iPad. So if you wanna go into voice memos and just start a voice memo, you're gonna get really good sounding audio right from your iPad without needing an extra microphone. So we'll click done and we'll play that. Memo, you're gonna get really good sounding audio right from your iPad. Now there's several cool features about the camera on this iPad. So of course you have your standard angle and then you also have your wide angle which you can activate over here. So you can click 0.5 or 1x 
and you can get right into there. And then on the front facing camera, you have your normal angle, which is kind of awkward as it's underneath me, but then you can also click this for your wide angle and you can see this wide angle shot, which looks pretty good. So this is brand new for the iPad and that's a super wide angle shot. Then of course you do have your video recording and this does have 4K video. So if you go into your settings and you go down to camera, you're actually able to change what format you wanna record. So if you wanna get really, really nice video, you can do 4K at 30 or 60 frames per second. But if you're more interested in just smaller file sizes and still good looking video, probably just stick with 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now next I want to talk about a feature called Center Stage, which is pretty simple, it doesn't really take anything on your end, but it utilizes that wide angle camera that I showed you before. So here I'm going to pull up uh, FaceTime on my Mac over here. I will FaceTime video myself. This is the angle that uh, I see, this is from my Mac. Then if I tilt up, you can see what is being sent from my iPad. So if I move over here, it's gonna shift the camera over here. You see my Wi-Fi is not the best right now. And then if I move this other direction, it'll follow me, which is pretty sweet. So then if I go up as well, it's gonna follow me up, go all the way to the side, and then back all the way over here, and then down. Now if you wanna scan a document on your iPad, you can long press on the Notes app and then click scan document. And this will allow you to easily scan a document and share it or annotate it or do whatever you need to do with it. Now one cool trick on your home screen, if you select multiple applications and then you tap like this, you can go to a different page and release all those applications at once on your home screen, which is really handy. Now, if you want to multitask on your iPad, you can do that. So I'll open up a Safari tab and then I'll go ahead and open up the files app to the side of that. And then you can drag left or right to readjust. And then you can open up a third document. So say I want music, I can just kind of hover it over the middle and then it'll open up a tab above both of those documents. So I can have three apps open at once and I can slide this over and I can slide it back just like that for quick access to the music app in this instance. And then if I have multiple apps open, I can swipe between them on the side. So I can have three apps open and quickly switch between others. And finally, if I have something open like a video over here, I can actually have four apps open on the same screen. So I have the sidebar, I have the files app over here, I have Safari over here, then I have the MLB app playing this video over here, which is pretty cool. When you're typing on the keyboard, you can pinch to bring in your keyboard and make it basically an iPhone keyboard and move that around for one-handed typing. And you can also swipe, so I can say, hello. And then I can pinch to expand. And then if I use two fingers on the keyboard, I can move my cursor through the text which is really handy. And then finally, if you want some better wallpapers than what Apple gives you, you can go to idownloadblog.com and go under the wallpaper section. And there you're going to be able to see a bunch of really great wallpapers that we have updated every week that you can choose from and put on your iPad. And that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and make sure to leave any comments if you have any questions down below.